Hello everyone. In this video, I will be discussing about drawbacks of valence bond theory. I have already discussed what is the valence bond theory. And now, I will discuss what are the drawbacks which came later on after the development of valence bond theory. Certain points which, was, which valence bond theory was not able to explain properly. And that leads to the further development of new theory called crystal field theory. But before going further, I would like you to take out your notebook, pen, pencil, so that you can note down each and every point which I will discuss here. Okay? But before that, I would like to tell you that I have started a new website called www.chemistryfiles.com. Here you can download each and every question bank related to my each and every lecture. So. I would like you that you should keep a regular visit to my website so that you can get new updates regularly and you can download now numerous huge amount of question banks which are available here. Okay, so let's start with the drawback of valence bond theory. One of the drawback of valence bond theory is that PBT classifies low spin, high spin complex on the basis of magnetic moment but octahedral configuration from D0 to D3 and from D8 to D10 cannot be classified as high spin, low spin on the basis of magnetic moment. Now I will show you some examples where there is ambiguity in case of low spin, high spin complex on the basis of magnetic moment. So let us start with Ti H2O pole 6 3 plus. In this complex, now we know that titanium has outermost configuration 3D2 4S2. Okay. But in case of Ti3 plus, it becomes 3D1. Okay. So let's see. 3D1 over S0. And if it forms octahedral complex with TiH2O6 3 plus, means 6 molecules of H2O are bound as are bound to TiL from with it. coordinate bond, then here we can see that In case of here we have 3D1 means there is one electron present, this is 4S2, this is 4P3 and this is 4P, sorry. this is 4P and this is 4P, okay. So let's check out. If it forms inner orbital complex that is low spin complex according to valence bond theory then it should have the hybridization of D2SP3 okay then these these six orbitals will be involved in the formation of coordination bond and here water will form coordinate bonds Okay. If we find out the magnetic moment of this, it comes about here one electron is free, so magnetic moment mu equals to root under n into n plus 2 Bohr magneton that is equal to root under 1 1 root under 3 Bohr's Okay, so this is inner orbital complex. Okay. Now let's see what happens when it forms outer orbital complex. In case of outer orbital complex, the same molecule will undergo 
द हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ऑफ एस पी थ्री डी टू ओके इवन इफ इट फॉर्म एस पी थ्री डी टू हाइब्रिडाइजेशन बाई इन्वॉल्विंग you can see that even if it involves sp3d2 hybridization in 4s 4p and 2 from 4d then also this electron remains free outer orbital complex and here also magnetic moment comes up around one electron is free so magnetic moment is B equals to root three. So in this case, when D I D one type of system is present, then the magnetic moment cannot be used to classify inner orbital complex, outer orbital complex, or we can simply say high orbital complex or low orbital, high spin complex or low spin complex. Similarly, if the system involves D two, then also we cannot classify. If the system involves D three, it means D one, D two, D three. And even D zero, they cannot be classified as high spin complex or low spin complex simply on the basis of magnetic moment, because in all these four cases the magnetic moment remains same whether the hybridization is sp three d two or d two sp three. So note down this example; it is very important. Now I will show you that in D seven example, in D seven type of system, there exists always an ambiguity between. high spin complex or low spin complex low down past so now let's take one more example where the configuration is of d7 type in case of d7 type of configuration the d has 1 okay it has 4s, 4d, and 4d orbitals present, which are empty. So let's take that first. It forms inner orbital complex that is d2 sp3 hybridization. So in order to form d2 sp3 hybridization, these two will get paired, and one of the electron will jump to 4d. In case of D two sp three hybridization, pairing occurs. So here, these will undergo hybridization, and one of the electron. Will remain here as free electrons, which has high energy and which is very reactive. So here we can see that magnetic moments comes around b equals to root under three. So even though it forms inner orbital complex, then its magnetic moment is not zero. So we cannot say that uh, it is clearly d seven can be classified into low spin complex because it has magnetic moment present. Even in case of D two sp three hybridization, if it forms sp three D two hybridization, then here we can see that these will involve in the formation of hybridization and here will also there will be some magnetic moment so there remains always an ambiguity that whether which one is low spin complex which one is high spin complex in case of d7 configuration so even d7 configuration cannot be classified totally as low spin complex or high spin complex because in case of the formation of d2 sp3 hybridization 
there is some magnetic moment present and what is low what is high we don't know about the exact separating line between high and low configuration in case of valence bond theory okay note it down fast Now the second topic of valence bond theory is that color of the organ, color of the coordination compounds. It was observed that all the paramagnetic substances, paramagnetic complexes, they were found to be of deep color. But all the diamagnetic substance, diamagnetic complexes, they were colorless, white, off white, or pale. So this property was not uh, this property cannot be explained on the basis of valence bond theory. Valence bond theory was very much successful in explaining the magnetic behavior of the complexes. But it was not able to explain that how paramagnetic complexes are deep in color while the magnetic, uh, diamagnetic complexes have white, off-white, colorless. So this behavior was not explained by the valence bond theory. Okay, note it down fast. Here is the third drawback of the valence bond theory. Valence bond theory is always biased to the coordination number 6 and 4. All the octahedral complex of nickel with a strong donor ligand are unstable and changes into a square planar complex by losing two ligands. Here you can see that nickel and S36 2 plus. Now, nickel has nickel 2 plus has 3d8 configuration on it. So, strong ligand pairing occurs, occurs and if it has to form D2SP3 hybridization then for D2SP3 hybridization the shape must be like the presence of electron must be like this. excited to 4d orbitals and this excitation is very requires a lot of energy from 3d to 4d okay so therefore it changes to in valence bond theory it has been suggested that it changes to tetrahedral complex where it loses its two electrons and it loses its two ligands get these two electrons back into the 3d orbital and develops tetrahedral DSP2 hybridization. So not tetrahedral, square planar DSP2 hybridization. But now 
there is one more possibility then instead of going to dsp to hybridization that is up to coordination number 4 is from coordination number 5 there could have been other another possibility from coordination number 6 to coordination number 4 there could have been another possibility of moving to coordination number 5 that is instead of going to coordination number 4 if it has converted itself to coordination number 5 by losing only one ligand and showing the hybridization of dsp 3 then it would have more stable it would have been more stable but wallace bond theory was not successful in explaining that why it preferred coordination number 4 instead of coordination number 5 so this is one more drawback of the wallace bond Okay, note it down fast that there is such preference to coordination number four and coordination number six, where there is possibility of showing coordination number five also. Note it down fast. Now let us come to fourth topic. According to valence bond theory, all outer orbital complex must be unstable as compared to the inner orbital complex because bond formed by the outermost high energy orbital is weak. but there are some outer most orbital complexes which are more stable as compared to inner orbital complex valence bond theory does not offer any explanation so these were the few drawbacks of the valence bond theory thanks for watching and in my next video i will take on a new theory called crystal field theory which has certain advantage or which has certain more explanation on the observation of the various properties of the complex compounds which cannot be explained by the valence bond theory